good for us in Mexico, uh, parallel to Oakland Ave. Because it was like a little cable just below? It was Verizon. took out the pole at the same time. Well, I'm still concerned with that one down by uh, Davis Road. But I'm, I know Joel will look at it and say it's fine. So it's, it's got to be good. Which one? Do you have any title? Yeah, that's, that's also Verizon. Is that? Oh, that's Verizon? Well, that's the new they're doing uh, putting Verizon into Midas now. So that's getting uh, – they're up – Raving it. It's 7 o'clock, so I'll call this meeting to order for Monday, 19 October 2020 at uh, 7 p.m., confirming member access. As a pre preliminary matter, this is Robert Holland, the Shrewsbury Electric and Cable Operations Selco Commission Chairperson. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons participating on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Kelly Trippy. Yes. Yeah. Kelly Marshall. Yeah. Kelly Marshall again. Okay, I'll go with Maria Lemieux. Here. Mike Rifolo. Here. Okay, and Kelly. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm here. Okay. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Christopher Roy, Selco General Manager. Here. Kathy Reba, Administrative Assistant. Here. Joelle Malabar, Manager of Cable Ops. Here. Uh, Jackie Pratt, Marketing Manager. Here. Uh, John Malabar, Systems Engineer. Oh, Jonathan may not be on. Okay. John Laverty, Manager of Electrical Ops. Here. Ralph Iacarino. Sorry, Bob, I'm here. Okay, got it, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Ralph Iacarino, Electric Systems Manager. Here. And, and Mike Quidadamo, Finance. Here. Is there anybody that I did not call? Okay. Introduction to remote meeting. Good evening. This open meeting of the Selco Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The order which you will, can find posted on with uh, agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Selco Commission is convening by video conference via Google Meet as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that you take care not to screen share your computer unless asked by the chairperson or the staff person. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. 
meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, the chair, will introduce each board member or staff member who has the lead role for this particular item or guest speaker associated with this item on the agenda. After we they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members first and then to staff members, inviting each to, by name to provide any comment or questions. I will then add, uh, call upon the members to offer a motion and then for a second. Please hold until your name is called further. Please remember to mute and unmute your phone by depressing star six or mute your computer when you are not speaking as to not trigger your camera feed or background noise. Remember that unless a document is being shared, your camera feed is triggered by your speaking or background noise. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy key with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Mark Serra, SMC manager and his staff, thanks, thanks to his team for the support in remote meeting presentations. With that, uh, we'll go directly to the first agenda, uh, agenda meeting. Uh, uh, item, which is uh, review and consider approval of the warrants and bill schedules. All members have been, uh, all, all com um, commissioners have been provided a copy of the warrants. Are there any questions or comments on the warrants as provided? Hearing none, I will uh, take, uh, uh, I'll take a motion to accept the, uh, the warrants and Ian to have me personally be the one that signs for all five of us based on COVID uh, access to the town hall. Uh, that once, if, if approved, uh, I will go in and sign for all five of us. With that, can I have a motion to accept that proposal? I move we accept the proposal. Hey, Tony, do we have a second? A second. Michael, thank you. Uh, with that, I'll do a roll call vote for acceptance of uh, the, the uh, warrants and bills as presented. Uh, first, Tony Trippi. Yes. Kelly Marshall. Maria Lemieux. Yes. Mike Raffolo. Uh, yes, except as to Miracle Connell. Oh, yeah, yeah, but the two that you yes, understood. And Kelly? Yes. Okay. Uh, and Bob Holland, yes. So with that, the uh, the warrants and bills uh, have been accepted as, as presented. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, report. Do we have a motion to approve? Or wait, first off, do we have any comments on the minutes of the September 21st, 2020 meeting? No. Hearing none, do we have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Okay, Tony, do we have a second? I second. Okay, thank you, uh, Maria. Uh, with that, we'll do a roll call vote to accept the minutes of uh, September 21st, 2020 as, as uh, submitted, uh, starting with uh, Tony Trippi. Yes. Kelly Marshall. Yes. Maria Lemieux. Yes. Mike Raffolo. Bob Holland, yes. Uh, next item is uh, Mike Quidadamo. We will be presenting the electric cash statements for September 2020. Yeah. Year to date, electric cash receipts of $27,628,768 are 6% lower than 2019 and even with our budget projection. And looking at the expenditures for the same period, they total $24,783,114. That's 14% less than last year and 13% less than the budgeted projection. That leaves what leaves us uh, with total available funds that total $18,555,193. That balance is 32% greater than the 2019 balance and 23% more than projected. Do any of the commissioners have any uh, comments or questions? Uh, and Mike Raffolo, those are some pretty big dis differences. Can you just give a little further breakdown on what it is that triggered? Is it capital expenditures or what the, can we break it out a little more? Sure. Um, let me take a look here. The capital expenditures, I, it, we just have not been in, 
incurring them. You know, not a lot of projects going on full speed at this time. Um, Is that the biggest trigger? There's a lot. There's a lot of money in that. Hang on a sec. I'm going to pull this up. Mike, it's Maria. Um, what were we anticipating yeah. um, for? We were budgeting ordinary plan investment, and that was at like a four and a half million dollar budget. And we've only spent one point four up to now. Um, was it COVID related that caused the delays in it, or was it um, just like what put a pause in what we were anticipating for this this fiscal year? I would, it, COVID certainly had a lot to do with it. Um, when we're looking, I'm checking out the variants now here, and I can tell you where the largest variances were. Um, you know, work on the C1311 circuit, um, under, under spent by $113,000 uh to the r13 r13 five circuits on the spent by also one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars um to do, do, do the beale school is under or behind by one hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars and the biggest one is the ami project one million oh eighty eight oh seventy eight Okay, so do you think we're going to get to that by the end of the year now that things or do you think we're not going to reach that level of expenses. Sorry to interrupt you, Mike. No, I from my perspective, I'd say doubtful unless, uh, you know, the, the guys in the field have anything uh, different to add. That's a lot of money to catch up on. I could add a comment if, if, uh, if that's appropriate. Um, so I, I think it, from, yeah, please go ahead. okay, thanks. Uh, so from, uh, my discussions with the, you know, uh, variety of folks on the team, uh, the AMI project is, we'll certainly dive into it in more detail with the budgeting of next year, but that schedule will put us into 21 for that type of capital investment. Uh, and I think, and, and some of this is a, uh, 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 unconfirmed, I'm sure someone here could confirm this, but I know uh, splitting crews in half for the uh, initial phase of, of, you know, COVID prevention measures uh, prevents a lot of the larger capital projects from happening just uh, due to the inability to bring crews together. So I, I would surmise some of that probably factored into our initial uh, projects entering into the summer. Uh, so I guess the combination of the two would generate the variances that we see. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, one question I have is, is some of this that we actually performed the work and it, it was cheaper or it's all just deferred and we haven't done it yet? Christopher, do you want to answer that? Or do you want Ralph for uh, maybe even um, John Laverty who's out in the field to answer? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I'm, <laughs> That's a great question. I, I apologize. I don't know all the details on that. I think John or Ralph uh, would be able to add some insight. I, I think some of the, the projects have come in under, uh, you know, I, I know, uh, uh, you know, some of the uh, quotes have been competitive for some of our other procurements. So I would guess if that theme is can been consistent throughout the summer, then uh, you know, that would be a contributing factor for sure. Okay, um, Christopher, I'm gonna, it looks like Ralph is ready to speak up here. Ralph, do you have any input? I can speak to the AMI project, uh, Mr. Chairman. There has been um, some delay. Some of it is COVID related and some of it is just uh, project related that it takes um, significant amount of time to get some of the material that we have to um, approve with um, the iTron company that we selected for the uh, AMI project. And uh, I think we were probably optimistic about having some of that done in 2020, aside from COVID. I, I can't blame COVID on the delay in the project. I think it's just a natural um, 
part of the process. We had heard from our, um, our vendor uh, representative and, and he suggested that whatever you plan on for its schedule, you probably should double it. And I think he was spot on. So the AMI project most likely will be um, in 2021, the mid bulk of the expenses paid. Okay, thank you. Microfolo, Microfolo does that, do you have any follow-ups? Yeah, it's helpful. I think it'd be interesting because it will probably have the same similar numbers next month, I guess. It'd be good just to get a little, you know, when, when there's more than a, I don't know, 10% difference on either what we're projecting or what we have versus what reality is, I think a little more uh, backup in the discussion would be helpful just so that we're on top of understanding um, kind of a little more what's going on. Usually when it's even, that's what we're expecting. So when there's a big discrepancy, kind of it's, I think on us to understand as, as, as a board, it's on us to understand why that there's a significant change. And then the backup to that, you know, is it a delay? Is it uh, uh, a little less expensive? Is it more expensive? That kind of a thing. Yeah, I think I think it'd be interesting to hear because I think there's some positives to that too. I think out in the field, there's been a lot of work uh, uh, more effect, more efficiently on on like uh, with the utility pole change outs and uh, and the and the, re, uh, the 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 restringing of wire, you know, going to the higher voltage uh, for transmission and whatnot. I may be wrong on that, John uh, Laverty. I see you you've uh, opened up. You you want to say anything? Yeah, for the uh, the C thirteen eleven project got put off because of the reconfiguration of the route. For those of, for those of us that are that are that are analog people in the digital world, can you explain what that what that C whatever it was you just said what is? Yep, the C thirteen eleven circuit we we're going to build up from uh, Suntec Boulevard up through uh, to Hartford on Hartford Turnpike, but the state is coming out and they're going to reconfigure uh, the route route twenty corridor. And uh, we've decided that we're going to wait until that happens because it could be funded through the state at that point. So there's a cost savings element on that. The Beale School project came in well on the budget because we were only using half the manpower for that. And uh, the cost came in a lot lower than anticipated at that point. Then the R13-4 and the 13-5 circuit will be put into the 2021 budget. Uh, because we didn't have the manpower to complete that project this year. Okay, thank you, John. I think uh, in, in in summary, based on what I, I take from Mike Rafolo and the other commissioners is that uh, ne next month on the variance and having an explanation on the pluses and minuses of uh, when we have a variance that uh, it, I'll use Mike's number of 10% if there's a variance much greater than that because we can have a better, uh, a deeper dive into those numbers. Mike, Mike Rafolo, any, any other follow-up? No, it's really helpful because it's uh, then it's a learning tool for us, even as we're learning a budget for next year. Um, you know, what kind of we, this is a little un, un, uh, untested for us. So what works, what works better, what's, what doesn't work as well relative to um, any delay or, or these, mm -hmm. these changes. That's, that's okay. how it's a learning tool. And it could be that there's something very positive that we're not aware of, too. So that's very helpful. Okay. Do any of the other commissioners have uh, any comments or questions? Hearing none, are there any other staff members who want to make a statement? If not, uh, do we have a motion to accept the uh, uh, electric cash statements as provided with the? Yeah, motion to accept, Tony. Okay. Second, uh, second, Kelly. Kelly will uh, second very well. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote uh, to accept the uh, electric cash statements. Uh, first, Tony Trippy. Yes. Kelly Marshall. Yes. Maria Lemieux. Yes. Mike Rapolo. Yes. And Bob Holland. Yes. Uh, so the cash statement for electrical side has been approved. Moving on to the next agenda item, which is uh, the cash statement, uh, cable cash statements. Again, back to you, Michael. Put it down. All right. Um, here's the overview, and then I'll hit on some high points. Uh, year to date, cash receipts of 16 mil. $413,066, about a percentage point more than 2019, and even with forecast, overall cash expenditures of 
$884 or even with 2019 and 18% less than budgeted expenditures. And that left us with available funds on 930 of 30,261,000 million, 261 and $100. That balance is 19% better than 2019 and 10% ahead of forecast. If you're looking at the expenditures, the one that jumps out was a very aggressive budget of 5.2 million for the uh, fiber to the home project. And uh, we are behind that number by 3.2 million at, at this point. So that's a large chunk of that, that money there. Um, if we're looking at uh, other operating revenues, um, they're up $299,000 compared to 2019 and uh, 263 uh, to budget. Uh, let's see, um, we received $184,000 in COVID reimbursements to date. That would be extraordinary um, when uh, considered with the, uh, the average of, uh, we take an average of last year to, to create the budget um, through the year. So that bump was unanticipated there and uh, explains that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Those are the two that are over 10% that I can uh, see there. If anybody has anything else, you can. Uh... Well, well, I guess the general question would be, and maybe uh, Christopher or uh... Joel can uh, dive in about the uh, fiber to the home expenditure that was budgeted. It was five point something million. You said we're about three. We haven't spent we have another three point one million to meet to that goal. Uh, I know there are some uh, it, some some achievements there. Christopher, can you highlight some of that and explain what's going on? Yes, sir. Uh, so I I'd say the um, we're we're well into the bidding processes. Uh, uh, like a bidding process, I guess, for multiple phases, and uh, and as as we had hoped, you know, the competitive process has shown that uh, bidding prices are lower than estimated. Um, some of this is, uh, admittedly, also myself getting a feel for um, what contingencies are incorporated into these budgetary numbers, uh, and so uh, so I think there's a to summarize, it's really a combination of uh, competitive bids as well as um, really ramping into this work starting. So we began uh, the early stages of phase one in July. Uh, and so we're, 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 we've built momentum since. And so as, as each month passes it right into the winter, um, there's more and more work being performed. So, um, so it's, it's that number, unlike Perhaps some of the other uh, on the electric side, where like AMI is is a 2021 um, initiative for sure. Fiber is ramping up, and it's going to go full bore right through the end of this year into 21 as well. So, um, so we should see those numbers climb right through the end of the year. Well, thank you, Mr. Roy. Uh, is Joel? Did you, did you have some additional uh, things you'd like to add to that? Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, in a way, COVID-19 also delayed the delivery of materials for a lot of the fiber to the home construction. Uh, the hope was to finish um, at least more than half of the IFPs uh, before the end of the year, but we're now projecting. Well, what's an IFP? The, the, uh, inv <laughs> invitation for, uh, for bidding. The, the, uh, so we have broken that we have broken down the project into six different bids uh, that are go that are basically covering uh, sections of the town. So the the goal was to have them most of them completed before the end of the year, um, because of materials were are are some of the materials are delayed. That they're still some of them are still in back order. We're seeing that is pushing the completion of our project for uh, mid March which I kind of show uh, a quick Gantt chart on the operating brief. Okay, thank you, Christopher. Uh, we'll wait for the operating brief for the overall story of what's going on with that. Um, are there any other questions from uh, from the, um, the commission on the cable, uh, 
cash report. Yeah, uh, just back to then that initiative of fibers at home. Are, have we overestimated what we think the cost is, and does that affect at all what we want to borrow or have asked to borrow um, relative to bond? Uh, Chris, Christopher, you want to handle it, or do you want to wait for the operating brief? Uh, I, I could uh, you can do just add a, a brief answer now, sure. Okay. Uh, so I think that that's uh, at least my current way of looking at things is is that um, you, you know there is some uncertainty with the other phases, especially given the quote new normal, if you will. Fiber has been more and more difficult to get. So I'm guessing if the the laws of supply and demand hold. There could be some risk in, you know, procurement costs moving forward into subsequent years. Uh, we hope that's not the case, but there is some there, you know, we're, we've been made aware of some risk there and trying to get materials procured now because uh, we've already seen lead times uh, extend, uh, but pricing seems to be still seems to be relatively stable. So, so that's a good thing. We want to jump on that as soon as we can. And then with estimates, uh, you know, there is some contingency built into that to, to manage that risk. I think the way I look at it as well is if we can uh, manage the project in such a way that we come under the estimates that indeed would be leveraged against our need to borrow. Uh, so there would be some advantages to cost saving measures there, uh, as well as other fiber investments that we could make in the future that we haven't necessarily discussed with past budgeting uh, items. But we've we've talked internally, uh, just for different ideas. So my takeaway is that we don't think we have a rampant, a rapidly rising price tag on on fiber to the home, but it actually is controlled and in, in good shape right now. And and the, with the estimates and whatnot, we should be lower than what we we originally estimated, given given the fact of supply and demand not not causing fiber to go through their ceiling as far as pricing. Right. Then my understanding. Yeah. Okay, Michael Rafolo, do you have any follow up? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any of the other commissioners uh, have any comments? If not, can I have a motion to accept the uh, cable cash report? Uh, so move, Tony. Tony, okay. and I'll second it. So, with that uh, said, I'll do a roll call a vote to accept the cash uh, uh, payment, uh, the uh, cash report, I should say. Uh, Tony? Sure. Yeah. Okay, Kelly Marshall? Yes. Maria Lemieux? Yes. Mike Raffolo? Yes. Mike? Yes. Yeah, okay, and Bob Holland, yes. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the uh, operating report. Uh, and with, with that, I'll turn the floor over to uh, Mr. Roy. Thank you, sir. Uh, so picking a, a few and happy to speak, speak to any and all items. Um, but uh, just trying to be concise. Uh, a couple of things actually uh, I'll add that I hadn't necessarily intended, but I guess kind of dovetailing with that last topic and some of our capital expenditures on the electric side. Um, one of the things that uh, I was intending to highlight here in the power supply section is this notion of strategic electrification. Uh, and so one of the things that uh, helps with that is the incentives and different uh, programs that we offer to encourage folks to engage in those types of programs. And so, um, and so as we look at our, our budgets and as we adapt to uh, the operating environment that COVID brings, you know, there are, I look at it as there's other opportunities to uh, look at where those funds can be directed. Uh, so strategic electrification is one of them, especially with the municipal projects on our doorstep. Uh, the other one, which isn't included here, so it's, this is an ad hoc comment, um, but my analysis up to this point has showed that utility scale battery storage is really the most advantageous when owned by the utility. Uh, and so the, the challenge to that is the initial upfront capital investment. Um, so if, if we, you know, we can also, that's another opportunity uh, to, to look at for some of those um, capital reserves as a future investment opportunity. Uh, the other one, um, so commercial solar, just a foreshadowing of the future. 
uh, to talk about some of the, the rates related to um, commercial solar and that metering. Uh, so I just I highlighted that there. Um, and then pulling a couple from the, uh, the cable service, um, you know, some of these will be covered in detail a little bit later. Uh, I'll pull out the, the, the Sterling. We've continued uh, to engage in that relationship with Sterling in their effort to uh, deploy fiber services to their community. And, uh, and then just leveraging that public power relationship we have uh, in the industry. So they, um, you know, they've, they've seen and, and kept uh, tabs on what we're doing here and applying it to their community. And so their, their board has been very, very enthusiastic about, uh, about, that, about that service. And so they, um, we met with them last week to look at what a schedule uh, to, to help them continue their project would look like through 2021. Uh, which is slightly more, uh, it's slightly faster, I guess, than initially anticipated with the 2022 timeline. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's, I guess, an exciting thing. Um, but the one of the most important ones I did want to highlight uh, is in the organizational change section. So uh, as, as you might recall from last month, uh, we had Bob LaValle retire. And, uh, and so October's retirement uh, was Paul Maynard. And so he, uh, another 32, long time employee, 32 years, uh, very knowledgeable, hardworking individual. So uh, again, it's, it's just uh, that, you know, that initial, um, you know, the, I guess, shifting, changing of the guard that the utility sector is facing. Uh, and so we're uh, working hard to, you know, look at, you know, our succession planning and making sure we backfill uh, um, Paul's role uh, appropriately. So congratulations to him. He, uh, he's decided after 32 years to, to, to explore new adventures. So uh, I, I commend that. So congratulations to him. Um, and then that, that you'll see the backfilling would be uh, two line worker um, positions uh, before the end of this year so we can continue to have uh, that succession plan in place. Um, and then a couple other noteworthy points somewhat just playing on the uh, budget um, theme from from today. Uh, we're, we're looking at a pre the prevailing wage law changes that really affected tree trimming. Um, so we're, we're hoping because it has such a wide reaching impact to communities across Massachusetts that there'll be of also a wide range of voices kind of expressing their displeasure for the uh, the increases, but um, but just something that's noteworthy. Uh, and, and then the last bullet point, another one, just a feather in the cap of public power and, and Selco in particular, is uh, um, is the continued pressure that uh, is placed on families with uh, utility bills and and. You know, it's it's my stance. Uh, you know, working with Meme and and Emwick, um, that you know this is an opportunity to also highlight the uh, efficient operations that public power exhibits on a day to day basis. As you know, plays well into the fact that we, ha you know, our uh, folks in our communities are, are able to uh, not feel the same financial burdens as others that have substantially higher rates and. Um, and you know, are facing uh, higher uh, rates of shutoffs. So I just added that in there. Um, and then lastly, uh, uh, more kudos. So uh, as, as I'm sure everyone knows, we had uh, a three-day outage at Town Hall uh, due to a, a internal circuit breaker failure on the switch gear. And uh, and I, you know, would be remiss not to commend uh, John Laverty and our crews. Uh, that respond to that over those three days to coordinate uh, not only the response and the contractors to to come in and replace that gear, but also make provisions to help continuity of operations with the facilities group to get, you know, any by any means necessary, whether it be uh, extension cords down the hall or portable air conditioners, you know, hung like spaghetti to find vent windows uh, to vent. Um, so you know, one of those uh, little things that that come come into play here, where 
this issue, you, you know, we tested that and, the, and power was provided by the utility from the street. And, and so in, a, in, the, in the more, um, you know, common scenario where you're an investor owned territory, they test from the street. If there's power from the utility, they drive away and, and then you're left. But in public power, you, you know, we don't leave until everyone is, uh, you know, uh, comfortable with the circumstances and we have a solution in play. And, and so that's exactly what happened here. So I had to point that out and, and commend that team for, uh, for stepping up there and, and making sure we minimized uh, the duration of, uh, of a really uncommon problem. So congratulations to them as well. Uh, Christopher, can uh, one, I'd like to add on to the uh, town hall exploits, having lived through those three days up there, a number of Selco retirees have been uh, tire tirelessly helping uh, the very overburdened and yet very talented uh, folks in the town cl clerk's office. Uh, they've got four employees and they're including uh, the, the town clerk herself. Uh, and they've had to track all the ballots coming in and out and especially all the mail-ins and whatnot. And the only operation that was going on at the town hall and, and duly so because of John Laverty and the, the correct electrical staff that came in and provided power, that they were able to continue the process of, of, uh, of, of not only receiving ballots, but also getting them out and processing what this, all the state requirements that have been added on to this early voting. 12,000 early votes uh, ballots have been sent out from the town hall during this period of time. Uh, with the, and, and on top of that, power was brought on just in time so that it was seamless for the opening of the in-person um, early voting that, that started Saturday morning without the efforts of, uh, of public power and most specifically Selco and especially the team that John Laverty led. Uh, they would not have been a, a pleasant uh, uh, welcoming to the from, from uh, to the citizenry for to, for the opening of uh, of uh, you know in person uh, elections of uh, voting up at the town hall. So again, I'd like to just pile on on the on the great job that John and his team did, and also the, for those retirees that are coming in and helping to stuff you know the the stuff the mailings and whatnot to help to ease the burden of a of a, a very uh, um, challenging uh, election uh, cycle. So, anyways, enough of getting. I'll get off the soapbox on that one. Yeah, how how are we doing on my 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 all time favorite of making sure that people at home that we have enough uh, cable uh, access, internet for all those kids that are staying at home uh, studying, and all the parents that have to work from home. Uh, can jo Joel or you give us an update on what's going on there? Joel, no, you go ahead, Chris. Okay. No, no, please, I'll pass the baton. Please. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we continue to make progress. We're down to uh, three more areas. Um, if you scroll down towards the operating brief, this time I, I label uh, what the areas are located. So what we uh, we have we've been able to complete uh, node 29, which is Cherry and Rockwell, node node six, Lake and Ferncroft, all the way to node 39 that was completed last week, and that's Prospect and Reservoir. So we have left node 12, which is by Maple and Old Mill, Old Mill, uh, node 52, which is Yorkshire Terrace, and we're hoping to have them completed uh, this upcoming Thursday. Uh, we will only have no 62 left, uh, which we're hoping to complete uh, and that's Avalon way. two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Avalon way. That's correct. Uh, so capacity, I mean, capacity wise, uh, most of the nodes are on the 50 percent capacity, which should be plenty of bandwidth for everyone to serve the, the web. OK, great. Thank you. Do any of the uh, commissioners have any questions or comments about the uh, op overall operations brief? Uh, uh, two th two things. One is, it, did the town hall have a generator, or was was the town hall running while it was down? Um, and the second was, I know we had to help out families um, relative to internet access uh, for students, and I wanted to get an idea, a report on that. Christopher, sure. Uh, so. Uh, question number one: Yes, the town hall does have a generator that ran the whole time. Uh, you know, in that type of situation, you find out what's connected to it. Um, and, and so, fortunately, you know, we had a, a bunch of uh, portions of, of, I guess, accessibility uh, outlets that were connected to generator, but not quite enough. Uh, so we did. That's led the need for extension cords and things to connect up. Uh, 
computers and printers, especially with the voting situation, uh, if they didn't have access. Uh, you know, for you know, another example, my office doesn't have any outlets connected to generators. So in order to uh, even just charge my laptop to work, I, I work from home. Um, but that was, an, you know, I guess if you could take a silver lining out of, uh, you know, the COVID environment, you know, shifting to a work from home uh, model was basically seamless, uh, even if it was your week to be in the office. So, um, but yes, uh, there was a generator uh, for, for some critical so, infrastructure. Just to follow up that, because there's a learning lesson, do we know if the other, um, all the municipal buildings, the schools and other buildings have a similar setup so that if we had this situation, obviously I think it would be, I assume it's on, on the different departments to have their own generator, although I don't know, I'm not, not sure of that, or whether we provide that as part of a service, but I'm just wondering if we know the infrastructure and if we're equipped um, if this were to happen in any other building, including the fire, you know, the firehouse or police department, those kinds of things. Bob, I think you're muted. Yes, I am. John Laverty, did you have something to say? Uh, just to uh, uh, answer Mike's question, the schools do have uh, generators the highway department, the water department, uh, we help, we donated some generators there. Um, every school does have their own generator, but it's just for emergency power. It doesn't carry the whole building load. Uh, yeah. The building load at uh, Municipal Drive is carried by our generator and the one at Parker Road carries that building load. Okay, thank you, John. And the other question I think that uh, Michael had was, uh, how are we doing so making sure that everybody in town, uh, every student has internet access? Sure. Uh, and so on that on that front, uh, we have coordinated with the schools. We have the list of students uh, that either received uh, tablets from the spring uh, initiative or and others that may have not received tablets and were new to the list that didn't have access at all. Uh, our, our customer service team has is, is actually uh, whittled that down to only three in, uh, individual families that did not have service whatsoever. Uh, and so we're in the process of coordinating with the school and reaching out to those families to get um, a, an internet service dedicated to those school devices uh, established for those, for those families, for their kids to learn remotely. Are you having a hard time reaching them because it's off, it's mid October, or are they is that why, or is it on us to reach out still? We have reached out. Uh, we did find I, I I don't quote me on this. I believe one or two of the three uh, email addresses bounced back. Uh, so then we have we go back to the schools to see if they have other means to contact these these folks. Um, but uh, that so that was last week, uh, and I have not heard. Uh, an update since that we've been able to reach them to to schedule installation. And just to follow up on the back on the generators, I think it'd be interesting just may, maybe by we, may, uh, by way of notification, to the extent the other departments don't know their functionality of the generators, I think it'd be good to provide a report to the various departments to kind of let them know what the capacity is and I guess to ask or to at least notify of any need for an upgrade or additional power or additional generation generator support in case of emergency uh, so at least we provided the notice in a report as to you know what what the needs could be and what 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 it provides for now yeah i think that goes hand in hand as well as this as follow-on design goes as they you know remember part of the whole uh um facility uh, up there besides the police station uh, in the was the town hall and whatnot was to you know, adding on and that part of that's going to have to be inter, uh, integrated into you know uh, follow on support with generators for the additional space that's going on and maybe a chance to improve the, uh, the the backup power and especially with the strategic communications uh, portion of the police station uh, being there that I think it's also consider consideration to make sure that you, you're going to have backup generating power to support or and or battery power to support those uh, initiatives going forward as well that should all be part of that program. Yeah, 
Did you agree with that, Chris? I guess so. Okay. Yep. Yes. Um, great, Michael. Do you have any other follow-ups? No, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Do any of the other board members have any questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to accept the operating brief? I move to accept the operating brief. Okay. I'll second. Okay, Michael seconds. I uh, will go through a roll call uh, approval. Uh, Tony Trippy. Yes. Kelly Marshall. Yes. Yeah, Maria Lemieux. Yes. And Mike Rafolo. Mike. Yes. Okay, and Bob. Yes. I think the only other thing we have is a COVID update. Uh, again, Christopher, Christopher, do you have anything to provide on that or pretty much think you covered everything? So we, 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 uh, we've covered everything. Nothing has dramatically changed from uh, um, last month to this month. Uh, we have opted to uh, stay on an, in an AB schedule given uh, the increasing numbers that we've seen. And, and so we have, um, we, we've, we've maintained uh, the, t uh, on town hall, I guess I should qualify that, the town hall folks uh, do come in, remain on an AB schedule from a work from home standpoint. And uh, we're gonna continue to monitor the increasing numbers, um, both in Shrewsbury, but also the surrounding communities. Uh, as, as we know, folks, not everyone lives in town as well, and then they have, uh, you know, networks that extend beyond our, our borders. So, um, so we've opted to stay the status quo operations for now as the situation evolves. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, to discuss the follow on, we're going to make a motion to adjourn the meeting, uh, the open meeting, and to uh, then we will. Uh, re rejoin an executive session, not to return to open session uh, following that uh, executive session meeting. So do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to we adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, I'll go roll call vote to adjourn. Uh, Tony Trippi. Yes. Kelly Marshall. Yes. Maria Lemieux. Yes. Uh, Mike Rafolo. Okay, and Bob Holland, uh, we, we will uh, we will uh, adjourn uh, at uh, current time of uh, uh, 1946, and uh, I'd say we try to get back into executive session at about uh, 1955. Uh, with that, uh, Bob Holland, I also confirmed to uh, adjourn the meeting. So, with that, thank you, and uh, again, uh, appreciate everyone's efforts and reports tonight.